Hi, and welcome to C++ Programming. In the previous two lessons, we talked about the constructor function that is used to initialize variables in the object or class. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about the destructor function. The destructor function is there to delete and clear up the object of any dynamic memory that was created, for instance, so that when the object is deleted, when the program ended, all the necessary things would be clean, for instance, dynamic memory that was created. So let's jump into the coding and see how the destructor work and how we can use the destructor in a class. So I've created a destructor.cpp file, C++ file, and we will start with our hash include iostream, our in basic input and output library using namespace std int main void return zero. So we save and we build and run. Just to check that everything works perfectly, our program executed successfully so we know we can go on. We will create a class called student oops no student public section and private okay so what we will do is I'm not going to declare any private variables now I'm only going to create a constructor and in the constructor I will output this is the constructor and the end line. So when we create a object of type student, so student, student one, so student one is a object of type student, the constructor will run when we create the object and we've seen this in the previous lessons. So if I run this, you will see the output. This is the constructor. So the constructor always run and we don't have to call the constructor. It will run automatically when we have defined a constructor and it will run when we create the object. Now the destructor will run as a last function when the object is destroyed. So when does the object when will the object be destroyed? When the program ends. When we hit this part here, the return zero. This is the end of our program. And then all the variables that was created, all the objects that were created will be destroyed from the memory. And when that happens, the destructor as the last function, and we also don't call the destructor function, it will run by itself. And in the destructor, you can then clear up some dynamic memory if you have created dynamic memory. So just to illustrate, I'm going to do this. Oops. This is the destructor and end line. So what we can see now is that when the constructor will run, we will say this is the constructor and at the end of the program we will output this is the destructor so if we build and run the program will create and it will stop as well so we will see this is the constructor and we see that the constructor um, processed first and then the destructor processed at the end but let's check and make sure that the destructor run at the end when the object is destroyed when the program ends 
So what I will do is just for creating a weight in our program, I'm just going to create the input variable and just say C in C in input. I'm not going to do anything with input. This will just create a weight for us. So we've got the, this is the constructor. The object was created. The program is waiting for input. And this can take as long as you want to. And then when we enter the input and we press enter, then the program will end and the destructor will be called when the object is destroyed. And that's the, this is the destructor. So the destructor is there at the end. It's the last function that will be called in the object, the object student1. And the student1 is of type student, this class. So why would we need the destructor? Now the destructor is nice, for instance, when we have, let's say, I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to create a int start pointer. Now in this int start, point, start pointer, we will say, let's say the pointer is equal to malloc, or not malloc, this is C++. You can also use malloc, sorry, but we can use new int. So in our constructor, we will create new memory, dynamic memory for this pointer. So this pointer will point towards new memory. And then we can work with that memory and we can say pointer is then the new memory space is then equal to two. And we can go and display this memory dynamic memory is equal to star ptr end line we can save this and then after we have created this new dynamic memory in our constructor at the very end in our destructor we can then go and delete this memory and just by doing so in our constructor we create the dynamic memory in, in our destructor we delete the memory just to make sure that all the memory was freed or deleted and there is no allocated memory still left after the program ended successfully so if we build and run this we can have this is the constructor. We create new dynamic memory inside this pointer is toward, pointing towards that dynamic memory. We insert two in that new memory. We print out that dynamic memory and the dynamic memory is equal to two. And then in the destructor, we delete and free that memory. And then we are done. So the unfortunate thing is in C++, we need to keep track of dynamic memory and it's our responsibility as the programmer to delete the dynamic memory that we created. There's no garbage collector in the case of Java that goes and delete unused mem memory but in C++ we need to go and delete that memory, free that memory from the memory of your device so that you can use that memory space after your program ended successfully for other applications. So destructors and constructors. Constructors will run first when the object is created and the destructor will run when that object, student one, is destroyed at the end of the program. And then when that function runs, you can go and destroy also your dynamic memory, for instance. That's all from me. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.